Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the Kingdom Key from Kingdom Hearts, Sora's first Keyblade. If you want to make it, here's what you're going to need. You will need some black wool, some brown wool, dark grey, light grey, white, dark blue, and finally, some yellow wool. Once you have every single one of those colours right there, and once you've figured out where you want to make it, I'll be making it right here. You'll want to kick this off with a row of six black wool in a row on the floor. That's six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And you know what? As a matter of fact, once you have your row of six black wool, do yourself a favor and move the yellow and the black next to each other. It'll just make these next few bits a little bit easier. So, once you've done that, and once you have your row of six black wool, you then want to stack a row of six yellow directly on top of it. And then on top of the row of six yellow, you want to stack another row of black. And then on top of your row of black, you want to stack two rows of yellow. So, one, two. On top of your two rows of yellow, stack another layer of black. On top of your row of black, another layer of yellow. And finally, on top of that single layer of yellow, stack a single layer of black. So you just want to have something which should look like this. Kind of looks like the body of a bumblebee. Once you've taken care of that, this is what you want to do next. So we just want to place two rows of black to the left and right hand sides of the shape that we've just made, kind of in this pattern right there. I didn't really want to explain that, but it should be quite easy to see what I've just done there, so you pretty much just want to outline what you've just done, except you just want to knock the top and the bottom blocks off of the rows on the left and right hand side. You guys can see what I've done there. Once you've done that, this is what you want to do. So, coming up to this top row of black that we have here, on the left and right hand sides of this row, we want to go up on top of these left and right blocks with our black wool by 17. That is 1, 7, 17. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And the right one as well, so I'm going to count this out again just to make sure that I've got, well, that first row right. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Are they level? Yes, they are. They must be 17, unless I've got it wrong twice. Odds are they're 17. So, once you've got your two rows of 17, you just want to connect them both together, top block to top block, like so. And once you've done that, once you have this black platform right at the top of your rows of 17, you now want to do this. You want to stack a row of yellow directly on top of this top row of black. You then want to stack a row of black on top of your row of yellow. Then stack a row of yellow on top of your black. Then a black on top of your yellow. Then a yellow on top of your black. And now finally, a row of black on top of your yellow to give you something which should look a little bit like this. Very similar to what we had down below, except we just have the single rows of yellow. Once you've taken care of that, this is what you want to do next. Pretty much the exact same thing that we did down below, actually. You just want to outline on the left and right hand sides with your black wool, what you've just done. So you just want to add two strips of black wool to the left and right hand sides, except the strips of black wool just want to be one shorter on the tops and the bottom in relation to the shape that you've just made. But again, that doesn't really need explaining. You guys can see perfectly well what you're supposed to do just by looking at that there. So once you've taken care of that, you should end up with something that should look a little bit like this, and I should point out, as I said, they are supposed to be different. The bottom one is supposed to have the double yellow in the middle, whereas the top, only the single yellow. Once you've reached this point right here, this is what you want to do now. So, come back down to the bottom of your key, and starting from this block right here, on the left-hand side, the outlining block, starting from this block, you want to go left of it, by two. One, two, with your black wall. 
Once you've done your two blocks, you then want to do two up left diagonals from your second block. So one, two. Go left of that second block by two. One, two. Then do an up left diagonal. And go left of it by two. One, two. Then do another up left diagonal. And go on top of it by two. One, two. Then do an upright diagonal. And go up on top of it by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then do an upright diagonal. And go up on top of it by eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then do two upright diagonals. So one and two. Place one on top of the second upright diagonal. Then do another upright diagonal, and go to the right of it by two, one, two. Then do two upright diagonals, so one, and two. Go to the right of the second upright diagonal by one, and you should find that all being well, that block that you just went to the right of by one should reconnect all the way back up to the top of your key, giving you a shape which should look exactly like this. Fairly simple. Once you've done that, we now want to do pretty much the exact same thing all the way over on the right hand side now, so pretty much just a mirrored image of what we've just done. So come right the way back down to the bottom, and starting from this bottom block right here, on the right hand side, just the outlining block, you want to go right of this block by two. So one, two. Then do two upright diagonals, so one and two. Go to the right of the second upright diagonal by two, one, two. Then do another upright diagonal. Go to the right of it by two, one, two. Then do another upright diagonal. And go up by two, one, two. Then do an up left diagonal. And go up by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then do another up left diagonal. And go up by eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then do two up left diagonals. So one and two. Go up on top of the second up left diagonal by one. Then do another up left diagonal, and go to the left of it by two, so one, two. Then do two up left diagonals, so one, and two. Finish this off by going left of that second up left diagonal by one, and again, just like on the other side, all being well, that block that you just went left of by one should reconnect you all the way back to the handle of the keyblade. Can you guys see how this is all shaping up right now? I'm sorry, I think I just hit my microphone right then, that might come through. But can you see how it's all shaping up? The middle bit is the handle where Sora would hold it, and the guard, or whatever you'd call it, I guess it's a guard, is all the way around the outside. So now all we have to do is just add in the inner ring of the guard and then we've pretty much finished with this bit. So once you've reached this part right here, this is what you want to do next. So coming back down to the bottom of our keyblade again, except this time coming to this block right here. So the top block on the outline for the left hand side, starting from this block, you want to do an up left diagonal. And then you want to go left of that diagonal by four. So one, two, three, four. Then do another up left diagonal. And go up on top of it by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then do an upright diagonal. And go up on top of it again by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then do an upright diagonal. And then go right of that diagonal by three. So one, two, three. And all being well, those three blocks that you just went to the right of your diagonal with should reconnect back to the handle of your keyblade. 
exactly like that. You've just got those four rows right there. I realize it's getting a little bit dark, so I'm going to be back in a moment once we have the daylight again and we can do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Alright guys, so once you've taken care of that shape on the left hand side, we now want to do the exact same thing on the right hand side. So, coming down to the equivalent block on the right hand side here, this block right here, this upper right hand corner block at the base of our keyblade, starting from this block, we want to do an upright diagonal and then go right of it by four. So one, two, three, four. Then do another upright diagonal and go up on top of it by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then do an up left diagonal and go up on top of it by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then do an up left diagonal and go left of it by three. So one, two, three. And that third block should just connect, all being well, right the way back to the handle of your keyblade and give you something which should, in total, look exactly like this. As you can see, we've now finished pretty much everything for the actual handle, the actual base of the Keyblade. Now what we have to do, other than colour it in of course, is we now have to do the actual blade part, the big giant key part. So, once you've taken care of that, this is what you want to do next, and this next bit is a little lengthy, pun intended, you'll see what this means. So, come up to the top of your Keyblade, and starting from this block and this block right here, just to mark those out, it's easier to show you where we're going to be going up from rather than just kind of tell you. So we want to go up on top of these blocks right here, the two that I've just marked out, do the same on yours. We want to go up on top of each one of those blocks, each by 75. That's right, 7 Five. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So starting with the left one, it doesn't really matter, left or right, going up on top of this by 75. And I'm not going to be counting this out verbally for you guys, otherwise my voice will be broken. So let's, well, I, I can start off a few. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Whoops, 10, that's 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. And there you go, that should be thereabouts. It doesn't have to be exactly 75 blocks up in the air. Um, that's just how big the original is. You could make it ever so slightly longer, or it could be ever so slightly shorter. However, what you want is somewhere between probably 70 and 90 blocks for the length of the blade. And once you've done that to the left hand side, you want to go ahead and do the exact same thing to the right hand side. And you could count this out individually, this right hand side, if you did have a number in your head. However, I'm not going to be counting it out. I'm just going to be making it level with the initial row. And as I said, you don't really have to get too hung up on the fact of whether it's like 75 or 74. It doesn't really matter that much. However, once you do have your two rows of 75 coming directly up, from the top of your key, you just want to connect them together, top block to top block, just as I've done there. And once you've done that, you then want to do this, we're just going to do the actual, like, the key part. Not, I, I suppose that you'd call this the blade part, and the key part is just going to be sticking out of the right hand side here. So, starting from the first block down, on the right hand side of your row of 75, so this block right here, you want to go right of this block, by three, so one, two, three. You then want to do a bottom right diagonal from that third block. Then go to the right of it by two, one, two. Then do another bottom right diagonal. And go to the right of it by two, one, two. Then do another bottom right diagonal. 
Go to the right by one, and then go down by two. One, two. Then go to the left by three. So one, two, three. Then do an up left diagonal, and go to the left of that diagonal by five. So one, two, three, four, five. Then go down by one. Then do a bottom right diagonal. And go to the right by one, go down by one, and then go right by one. Then do a bottom right diagonal. Then do an upright diagonal. Go to the right by one. Then do a bottom right diagonal. And go down by one. Then do a bottom left diagonal. And go to the left by one. Then do an up left diagonal. From that up left diagonal, do a bottom left diagonal, and go to the left by one. Then go down by one. Then go left by one. Then do a bottom left diagonal. I realise that this part is relatively complicated, so I'm just going to show you what that should look like. I say complicated, the description is somewhat complicated, but it's actually quite easy uh, when you look at it. It's just a load of twists and turns, really. Uh, there's no row there that's actually longer than six, so that is what you want to have for the, well, that's half of the actual key part of the key. So once you've taken care of that, and again, I just want you guys to see what this is supposed to be shaping up as. Once you've taken care of that, we can now take care of the other half. So just coming back down to where we were just building, where we have this single bottom left diagonal, you want to do a bottom right diagonal. And then go right by one. And then go down by one. And then go right by one. Then do a bottom right diagonal. Then do an upright diagonal. Then go right by one. Then do a bottom right diagonal. Then go down by one. Then do a bottom left diagonal. And go left by one. Then do an up left diagonal. Then from that up left diagonal, do a bottom left diagonal. Then go left of it by one. Then go down by one. Then go left by one. Then do a bottom left diagonal. And go down by one. Then go right by five. So one, two, three, four, five. Then do an upright diagonal. And go right by three. So one, two, three. Then go down by two. One, two. Then go left by one. Then do a bottom left diagonal. And go left by two. One, two. Then do a bottom left diagonal. And go left by two. One, two. Now do a bottom left diagonal and finish this off by doing two blocks going left of it to reconnect all the way back to the blade to give you what should be the fully completed key part of our kingdom key. So that is what you want to have right there, kind of like a sideways M shape. Or a W shape, I suppose it depends on your perspective, but that is what you want to have. Not too difficult, I hope. Once you've taken care of that, you have actually fully completed your kingdom key outline, and I'm just going to show you this because it's actually going to be getting dark in a second and I'm going to have to cut this out and then come back so we can color this in, but as you can see, once you've taken care of that little key part, we've actually fully completed the outline of our Kingdom Key. All we have to do now, as I said, is just fully colour this in, which we're going to do once I'm back in a moment with a full day ahead of us. Back in a mo. Alright guys, so once you've reached this point right here where your Kingdom Key looks the exact same as mine, you've just got a big giant outline, it's now time for us to fill this thing in. So, we're going to start from the bottom and work our way all the way up to the top. We may as well, that's how we built it, that's how we'll colour it in. So, come down to the base of your key, take out your brown wool, and we'll start off by filling this rectangular section that we have in the centre of our key in with brown wool. 
We're just filling in the handle. This is the part that Sora grasps onto as he's beating the brains of Heartless in. So you just want to fill that little section right there in with brown wool. Very simple. What you then want to do, once you've done that, is coming over to the bottom left hand side, you want to place a single brown wool in this position. It's easier to show you than try and describe it to you. You want to place a single brown wool in that position. And you also want to place a brown wool in the opposite position on the right hand side. So just there and there and here. You just want those single brown wool placed on the left hand side and on the right hand side right there. On the actual kingdom key in the same positions, there's just tiny indentations. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of those are. Um, tiny indentations, and that's just what the brown is. It's just to show you that it's kind of sunken in a little bit. You could use um, black, or you could use another colour that's just darker than the yellow. That's what those are, just in case you're curious. And once you place those two single brown wool in those positions right there, you just want to go ahead and fill the rest of this thing in with yellow. So all the way around everywhere else, just inside the lines, you just want to fill everything in with yellow wool, just as I'm doing now. Uh, I may as well do this on recording, why not? Why not? It's not going to take too long, so... Just everywhere else, throw your yellow wool in. Obviously, you don't have to, like around the handle part here in these big giant empty spaces that's supposed to be empty but everywhere else in between these uh, two outer black lines you just want to throw your yellow wool everywhere so let's just get cracking we've just about finished it actually we're more than halfway done so let's just continue on with this and once we have finished the handle part the base part of this we get to mess about with the blade a little bit, which actually isn't too hard whatsoever. So, just to show you what this thing should look like, once you've completely filled it in, this is what you should have. As I said, very simple colour scheme, the actual handle, the part that he grasps, brown, those two single brown on the bottom left and bottom right hand sides, and then everywhere else in with yellow, very simple. So, once you've taken care of that, now come up to the base of the blade part, right here, and on top of this bottom row of black, or the top row of black, I suppose it kind of depends how you view it, but on top of this row of black right here, you want to stack five rows of dark blue, like this. You want to do one, two, three, four, five rows of dark blue, right at the base of the blade, so like that. And then, once you have your five rows of dark blue, stack a row of black on top of the fifth row. Then, stack a row of light grey. Then, a row of dark grey. Then, a row of light grey. And finally, a row of dark grey. So you just want to have something which should, in total, look exactly like that. That is what you want at the base of the blade. Once you've done that, this next bit is actually quite easy. So, coming up to this top row of dark grey, you just want to do two rows of light grey. One on the left hand side, hugging the left outline of the blade, and one row of light grey on the right hand side, hugging the right hand side of the blade. So, you just want to have something which should look a little bit like this. I'm not going to completely zoom out for you, but as I said, one light grey row on the left-hand side hugging the black, one light grey row on the right-hand side hugging the black. And once you've done those two rows, you then just want to do white wool everywhere in between them. So you just want to have two rows of white wool directly in between your two rows of light grey. So just like this. Just as I'm doing now, just fill in this nice little center part. And again, I'm not going to zoom this out for you all the way, but you guys can see quite easily what you have to do there. And that just gives perspective to the blade. It makes it just look as though it's not just, you know, completely flat, as you'll be able to see once we zoom out. But once you've taken care of the actual blade part, now we can come up and take care of this key part, which for the most part is actually quite simple. Let me just get my plans up, guys. Uh, they're not in my view right now so 
Once you have taken care of the blade, come all the way up to the key and place white wool in these positions right here. Place white wool exactly where I'm placing it now. I'm going to show you in a moment where I've just placed it. Just place it in those positions right there. That is all you want to do. You want to place those six white wool exactly where I've placed it. And once you have placed that, you then just want to take out your light grey and fill everywhere else inside the key with light grey wool. So, just as I'm doing now, fill all of the empty space in with light grey wool. So, just going to crack on and do that. Shouldn't take too much longer if I can actually place the light grey where I want it to. That'd be nice. It's got this part. Come on. Da, 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 da. And there we go. So let me just show you this key done right there. So that is the key part. As I said, those six white wool and then light grey everywhere else. Nothing too complicated about that whatsoever. So, once you've taken care of that, you've done. You've finished. I'm sorry, I got slightly distracted there. I, I paused for a moment, but you have 100% completely finished your kingdom key. Let me show you what this whole thing should look like once you have completely finished it. Let's, let's get a nice big giant kingdom key in our view shall we so let's just zoom out let's take off the user interface and let's let's marvel at we, uh, what we've just done so this is what you want to have once you have 100% fully completed your key very easy color scheme the blades probably hmm actually the handle's quite easy, it's, it's all quite easy there's nothing too difficult about this key I think but that is what you want to have Hopefully, what I have on my screen is exactly what you guys have on yours. Hopefully, this was easy enough to follow. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.